Right, guys, question four, paper two. Five times 10 to the minus four moles of hydrogen gas is mixed with one times 10 to the minus three moles of iodine vapor in a sealed one liter vessel at 455 degrees C. The concentration formed in equilibrium is 9.3 times 10 to the minus four. Give you the reaction, they ask you for the equilibrium expression, which of course is product over reactants. Remember the two there means the HI concentration is squared. The other two obviously as they are. The KC for this reaction would be, let's have a look. So remember now, obviously, that these initial concentrations formed that concentration there. So if that's the concentration of HI formed, and it's a one to two ratio for each of them, then half of that value needs to be subtracted from each of the two starting moles. Okay, so let's have a look. So what have we got? Um, so 4.65 times 10 to the minus 4 is the, let's have a look. What have we got here? Change in hydrogen equals iodine. Yeah, okay. They, they've, they've gone to a lot of trouble here to do something quite simple. Because the vessel is one liter, these effectively are concentrations, right? They've gone into moles and stuff like that. All you've got to do, guys, is halve that value. That would be 4.65 times 10 to the minus 4. And then subtract that from each of the starting concentrations, okay? That one there and that one there. So when you do that, these become the equilibrium concentrations of hydrogen and iodine. You then put them in the KC expression. So you've got your 9.3 times 10 to the minus 4 on the top. You square that. You've got your two values here multiplied together on the bottom. And that will give you an answer of 46.2, which needs to go in the box. Uh, what effect would a catalyst have on the reaction rates, the position of equilibrium, and the value of KC? Now, a catalyst will lower the activation energy barrier. In a reversible reaction, effectively, it's lowering the barrier by the same amount for the forward reaction and the reverse reaction. So therefore, it will speed up both reaction rates. It will have no effect on the equilibrium position because effectively, they go to both speed up by the same amount. And it certainly will have no effect on KC. Uh, remember, just for uh, your knowledge and your understanding, Kc can only be changed by a change in temperature. Pressure and concentration can change the equilibrium position, but they cannot change the value of Kc. Very important you remember that. And I think this is the final question. Question five, a sample of iron ore was tested for its iron content using this procedure. So we take our iron ore sample, we react it with sulfuric acid. The Fe becomes Fe2+. This is then titrated with manganate and changed into Fe3+. All the iron in the sample is converted to Fe2+, by reacting, and it formed hydrogen gas. Okay, the first thing they want is a balanced equation for that reaction, which is a simple one something you would have done in unit two, but they still want you to know it in unit uh, three, I'm afraid. So it is what it is. And then it says, identify the species oxidized. Well, clearly Fe starts at zero. It becomes Fe2 plus. It's going up or it's losing electrons, either, either an increase in oxidation number or loss of electrons, both among the same thing. Fe is basically being oxidized. Um, it then says um, half equations to balance the redox equation. Now use your data book. They give it to you. Go down to page 10 and you will see that there is the Fe equation going backwards. Oxidation, remember? Okay. And there's the magnet equation going forwards, a reduction. This requires five electrons. This basically... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm telling you something wrong. Okay, so it's saying the half reactions to balance the redox equation, it's saying 
the Fe2 plus is being reacted with MnO4 minus. I apologize. So we want the equation between MnO4 minus and Fe2 plus. So it's this equation here, guys, Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus. And this equation again, MnO4 minus to N2 plus. Now you will notice this requires five electrons. This provides one. So you will need to multiply this equation by five. And that's why in the answer, you will see a five there and a five there. Now, where do the eight and the four come from? There's your eight. There's your four. They give it to you. They give you the answer. You've just got to use the data book. Again, please get, get familiar with the data book. There are a lot of pages towards the beginning, uh, ionization energies and stuff like that. You don't need those anymore. Uh, thermochemical stuff like bond energies, you don't need that anymore. So really speaking, this table here is probably the first page you need. But remember, those first couple of pages give you some constants and some equations which will be useful to you. Um, calculate the percentage of iron in the iron or sample show you're working. Well, they tell you that, um, so it says that, let's have a look. The final volume was 500. So that was the volume of this at the start. It then, you then use 25 of it. Remember that difference at the, at the end, you're going to have to use that. It then says manganate was used There's the concentration. There's the type of volume. So to get the number of moles of manganate, you would take your concentration, 0.05, and multiply by 16.4 mil in liters. So you need to change that into liters, and you will see down here, 0.0164. You've divided it by 1,000. That gives you 8.2 times 10 to the minus 4. Now from the equation, 1 reacts with 5, so the number of moles of Fe2 plus will be 5 times that. That's in 25. In 500, there would be um, 20 times that, which effectively is um, your 4.1 times 10 to the minus 3 times 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.025. Effectively, you go from 25 to 500, you're multiplying that by 20. And that gives you 8.2 times 10 to the minus 2. You then multiply that by... 55.85, which is the molar mass of Fe. You will need to use the periodic table, which is quite close to the, to the start of the booklet. And that will give you um, 4.6 grams. It then says to you that, let's have a look, what's it say? Uh, oh, eight grams was the original iron sample. So you now have the percentage where you put your 4.6 over 8, divide, divide one into the other, multiply by 100, and you get an answer of 57.2%, okay? Which I'm guessing, again, will need to go in that space there. Okay, well, good luck, guys. My, my work is done. Your work is just starting.